Okay, so my name is Benita. I'm here with Sarah and Natalia. And the topic that we're going to be doing today is breaking generational, generational cycles. So Natalia, Sarah, can you guys tell me what comes to mind when you hear generational cycles? Um, so I would say it's probably the kind of stigma that could be carried on from generation to generation. So if there's a certain... Um, Kind of like family trait say no one in the family's ever gone to college or been educated or there's kind of a lack of goal set and that's been passed on from generation to generation and um, it's at your point where you turn around and you're like no i want to change that and that's where you break the cycle and you say no one after me will have to be that in that position mm -hmm. what yeah. do you think natalia like i would say the same like basically what she said mm -hmm. it's important to have like to be aware of what your family's been doing and what you, the effects that it has mm -hmm. in your life yeah and then you can definitely like stop you to not kind of pass to other generations for the next yeah. generation no very true like definitely agree with the both of you <laughs> like when I hear generational cycles, I always think like, oh my God, it's only stuck to like culture or like yeah. what's in your home. But also generational cycle could be from mental health mm -hmm. to addiction because yeah. maybe people in your house never had addiction, but then one person, it, but then one person had it or you, yeah. you, you're the one who started the cycle. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to learn how to stop the cycle with the, within us if we're the one who started it. Like gener generational cycles can happen from birth. like. Mm -hmm. You know, there's fetal, what is it, fetal alcohol syndrome? Oh, where the the baby's yeah. born and they well, already yeah. have an addiction. Oh, that's yeah. like um, uh, mothers who are doing drugs yeah. and exactly. like heroin or whatever they are. Yeah. And uh, the baby, when it's born, is addicted is to the addicted drug to already. Yeah. So then they have to go through like withdrawal syndrome. So yeah. like for them, that's them breaking that cycle. They have to learn how to break it from the beginning. Like generational cycles can actually start from birth which is something that is very important to learn. It's not only those who are with addictions, not only those who are stuck in a general, in maybe an unhealthy environment, but mm -hmm. it could be your own mental health, it could yeah. be just you yourself or your eye. It's that just basically overall, that's what a generational cycle is. Like, if you relate to any of this, we can't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Simple, <laughs> thank God is the run true. <laughs> so my second question I actually had for you guys was what do you think do you think it's actually hard to break a cycle oh definitely especially when you don't know that you've been struggling with that mm -hmm. like especially when in case of the addiction like if your mom used drugs when you weren't even born mm -hmm. how would you know that mm -hmm. maybe they didn't tell you that so yeah. I don't know I don't know exactly what it is to feel like addicted to heroin when you're a baby mm -hmm. I don't know the consequences I don't know but I think it is hard, especially when you don't know what mm -hmm. happened before that you yeah. were even born. Yeah. yeah, I definitely agree. What do you think, Sarah? Um, yeah, I'd say so. Like, you see, by the time you actually realise that it is a pattern and that it needs to change, you've been so used to it for so mm -hmm. long. It would be hard to kind of, especially in like a family situation, to stand up to people mm -hmm. and be like, no, this has to change. Like, I don't want to do it this way anymore. It's not going to be like that. Yeah from now on or like after me um, yeah and I think as well especially when it's kind of things that you believe mm -hmm. it's yeah. hard to change because yeah as you mentioned at the beginning like no one maybe your mom or your dad hasn't gone to like college mm -hmm. and then maybe you think why would I do that if even my d my parents didn't do it mm -hmm. yeah. yeah you know it's hard to, to break these beliefs as well too yeah I definitely agree with both of you like to break a cycle mm -hmm is so much harder than to start a cycle yeah. like it's already like if you, like to say for people with like addictions like we were talking there like you can like you could have one drink and then tomorrow you could say i'm gonna have another one yeah. and then next day i can have another i can have another one and then next thing you know you're when you're in so deep you don't realize like that you yeah. have a problem so that's why i think it's actually kind of hard to break a cycle 
because if you ever like watch programs yeah. or like shows like like hi my name is Benita and I'm an um, I'm an alcoholic like, yeah that's already them taking a step to break it because yeah. it's they're fed up that's yeah they're fed up and that's also one that's the beginning of them realizing yeah. that they actually are stuck in a cycle yeah and another kind of good example of that would be men's mental health and yeah that kind of stereotypical oh men don't cry men mm-hmm. um like just toughen up you're a man like get yeah. over it that kind of thing and i think as well um more in like recent years men have started to realize like oh no like i do have a problem and mm-hmm. it's okay that i have the problem yeah. and it's okay to ask for help yeah whereas they're like say dad their granddad uncles they would ne- say they would have been depressed or had mm-hmm. anxiety problems mental health problems and they never would have sought help because the generational kind of stigma kind stigma, of shows yeah. that oh if you're and a man you can't that's show another pattern. yeah yeah it's a good i don't know have you watched the mask we live in it talks about exactly oh, really? what you're saying is on netflix mm. oh stop Ash, i've never heard it what yeah, is it about it's about like the guys like from is they basically just like talking about boys they like they struggle at home mm-hmm. but they don't know how to deal with emotions yeah because, like, exactly what they're she not said. talked to yeah. yeah and that's not even generational like home like that's just generations yeah. after generations that are yeah. teaching people like it's not okay to yeah. show and it's patterns but, like yeah. that that i think we're talking about yeah that we need to break yeah definitely like i think that's a huge thing that we're definitely learning so guys are learning one thing is that it's not easy to break a cycle and once and it's going to take time to learn how to break it or not even break it but learn how to mend something that was broken which is very important so my next question for you guys is do you guys have tips that can help someone who's actually stuck in a cycle i know sarah you had something there for us um yeah so one of the things that i found would be a great way to help break the generational cycle is to take accountability for your own like family situation like look at your family history see if there is a pattern that has developed over years again an example could be men's mental health education even affection like family affection like i know a lot of families which i thought was strange to kind of realize that like like me and my parents like we always say oh I love you mm-hmm. my brothers and sisters oh I love you like when we're leaving it's almost a habit now but a lot of families aren't like that and no, it's, they're that's definitely not. not affectionate in that kind of way and that's obviously another generational pattern that would have been passed yeah. down that's, it's, it's, not, it's not really like their fault that they no. don't know like like some kids now could be like oh my parents don't tell me I, they love me yeah. but like sometimes like you have to think like were they told that themselves yeah. so kind of hard to t- for them to tell you mm. something that they it's so unfamiliar to their ears or to their own eyes yeah, yeah exactly so one thing would obviously be educating yourself on your family history all that kind of thing um and be self-aware of these destructive patterns and mm-hmm. um, because they could be going on you wouldn't even realize yeah. you wouldn't think oh that is an issue um and just to make sure that the pattern or the trend stops with you like yeah. you're coming to terms with okay this is actually an issue this mm-hmm. is a problem it shouldn't be like this and um, make sure it stops with you mm-hmm. and that anyone who comes after you doesn't have to yeah have to fight that same battle yeah. that you have to fight exactly because you fight for, you fought for them yeah look at that Sarah <laughs> you guys look at that I'm learning something <laughs> but um yeah that's that's kind of the the main um kind of points that I had that you could break no I definitely okay. agree with you like I think me and Natalia can definitely agree like yeah, definitely that agree, yeah. like it definitely like if you learn anything is that it starts with you mm-hmm. and it can it may not start with you but, but it can, can end, end with, with you, you. Yeah. yeah which is an important thing that you can learn like and take as an actual like motivation oh, as yeah, well completely. because sometimes like it's, it's hard to say it yeah. it's easier said than done yeah. but once you get started like it's of course it's not going to be an easy journey but it, these are just tips like yeah. but you can do more than this like yeah. we c- we were just saying tips that we that you guys can use but maybe these tips are not for you or what you're going through but they're tips that yeah. maybe you can you can pass on Onto or share somebody it. else or somebody exactly. else who might need it which is a great learning curve as well because i think definitely like especially when you're stuck in a cycle or mm 
you're stuck in like that addiction or you're stuck in that mental health state yeah. it's hard to see the way out like mm. it's that whole tunnel oh, yeah. vision that you're yeah, going exactly. through like yeah. like you don't see anything like that you ever hear the things like when you're in a relationship it's only you and the person yeah but then you always need that one person from the outside looking, looking in, in. <laughs> yeah you need that bird's eye view to be like no this is not right <laughs> this is not good like just say for me in my culture like mm. like i said for the marriage thing like yeah for us like if you get married like mm. you would have um parents of marriage they're not your parents but they're two oh, okay. people who are been married for a very long time and they kind of guide you and they guide you through your oh, marriage oh, like wow, if you yeah. guys have an, any issues or anything yeah. they'll guide you through it because like a, a lot in my culture mm. like there's a lot of breakdown or generational yeah. cycles of like this person gets married and it's it's just all backwards mm. but like you always have your parents of marriage that are looking into your relationship yeah. that if you guys are stuck advice. or anything they're there for your advice yeah. they're there to help you out which is That's really so good. important yeah, like nice. which i think is an amazing thing mm. to have because instead of instead of having the, the general cycle the generational cycle start mm. there they're stopping it before yeah. it begins which is and i think it's a hugely a an important thing that i think i would definitely will yeah. have <laughs> one day in the future <laughs> but yeah like it i think it's an amazing thing to have mm. because it, helps stop that aspect of a, a tunnel vision yeah instead of seeing only your pr perspective yeah. but now you're gonna have somebody there to help you look at your situation from a different perspective yeah. to help you not break it but stop it before yeah it, something and it gets might broken. not even be you noticing these yeah. um generational patterns yeah it could be it could others. be a friend yeah. it could be a cousin it could be someone a neighbor anyone mm -hmm. and just notice a little thing and they say it to you and you kind of start thinking about it and you're like oh always been like that yeah and like that's kind of been the status quo yeah and definitely it's up we, to you then to realize. we tend to repeat our parents like yeah. attitudes and exactly actions. yeah mm -hmm. like for myself like my dad was the first in his family to go to college and get a degree yeah i clap a quiet. that's amazing <laughs> <laughs> but like no one in his family before that did it did, in, yeah. did go to college mm -hmm. and then there's myself then i've got my college i'm doing my college degree now so We're i'll be finish next it. yeah that. so it's almost in a way um him realizing oh this is a generational cycle yeah. i'm gonna break that yeah. he went off he didn't even go off straight from leaving sir to college he waited he worked he, mm -hmm. he saved up money and then was like no i do want to go to college mm -hmm. went to college got his degree did a phd all that kind of stuff and now i'm going to college and mm -hmm. so is my sister and my brother probably will as well yeah so that's I amazing that's, yeah. yeah that's nice yeah because like he stopped the, the cycle yeah. from him he was like i will stop i'm gonna break the cycle this will from stop me. with me <laughs> this will stop with me and i'm gonna start a new <laughs> and healthier cycle in yeah. some sense with my children doing something better for themselves yeah but have you asked good. him why he decided to go to college i think he he was working working away and i think he just realized like he he did computer science and maths mm -hmm. um and he realized, oh, like this is something I'm actually interested mm -hmm. in. And his family wouldn't have been, like, say, necessarily academic. Yeah. But he himself is, like, he's quite a nerd, like. <laughs> but um, he went off and he did it and he went to his work and was like, I want to go do this college course. Mm -hmm. um, didn't do necessarily well in secondary school, but he went to college when he was older and it turned out really well. I oh, love that's it. Nice that's a, that's yeah. a good example. To yeah, see. <laughs> I didn't even realize that was yeah. a, a yeah. generational cycle. Thing yeah, there. You, like it's some things like you don't actually realize that. Yeah, it's like you, like you said, like you may not see it. Like, mm. like I'm so used to it. Like my parents don't tell me they love yeah. me. That's so normal. But like realistically, like, like even though affection is not based on where like everybody mm. has their own love language, yeah. like of course. But like, if you if there's nothing there, like and you're like I'm used to that. Like yeah. then you have to question like exactly is there something here that my parents didn't have, mm. my parents' parents didn't have. Is this yeah. something that is ongoing yeah. that we're missing out or confused on? Yeah. Like, what's going on here? We have to ask these questions. But no, like, I 100% agree with you yeah. guys. Like, good thing to think about. Yeah. But I actually have another question for you guys here. Last and final <laughs> question. Um, how can us as a community help people in a cycle? First of all, I think there's no. It's important to not judge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Huge. Agree. Yeah, because I think when you judge, people tend to kind of like go away mm -hmm. from that issue. Mm -hmm. 
So it's important to embrace them and talk through it mm -hmm. and then maybe give advices and yeah, but I think the most important thing for me in, in this is in terms of like community helping people mm -hmm. is more like to not judge. Yeah. And, yeah. And I think that's important as well, especially because you don't know what people's circumstances it's are. Very true. Or like what scenarios they could be in situations, mm -hmm. like you said, with drug addiction, they yeah. could be living in poverty, yeah. it, like that kind of stuff where they can't afford mm -hmm. to do things that nowadays would be kind of seen as a norm. Mm -hmm. Like going to college, college yeah. is expensive, like we know that ourselves. Don't get us started with these fees. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but like someone who collects like social welfare or mm -hmm. anything like that, like it they might not be able to afford mm -hmm. college and or the nice car or the nice, the cars, nice or house like or that. a house yeah or know. something that you might see as a generational yeah. pattern yeah they might not be able to change that because of their circumstances yeah yeah so very true that's another thing you have to remember yeah i de very definitely agree with you guys on that and i think like one thing that you can do is definitely have patience mm. with people actually struggling maybe with addiction with mental health because it's it's not easy to get in yeah. it's well it's easy to fall into a habit yeah but it's so hard to get out yeah. of something that you've been doing a lot of the yeah, time it's almost like, routine yeah, like yeah it's like it's your daily routine yeah. like like it's kind of like the patient is key like i remember i met this guy i used to work with mm. and he told me like how he used to struggle with addiction a lot yeah. and then he was like even like to look me in the eye yeah. he was like because I'm, I'm comfortable with you because mm. you're not pushing something you're not pushing me because yeah. you're, you're having patience with me while I'm talking mm. and he was like oh like it's hard for me like to look in somebody in the eye like I used to not be able to look people in the eye because I was so ashamed of yeah. how I how I used to be like how yeah. what I was struggling with but like one thing I learned is like is that I had to understand for myself like they people need to understand for themselves like themselves that they they can get out yeah. like they ca can get out of that cycle yeah. but it has to come from their own realization because yeah. we could say oh do this do that that's what i was saying you can say, i can give you tips today yeah. and how to get out but you it's it's all you about rely your on own. anyone else yeah kind of on your it's actually frustrating yeah like, yeah when people saying to you like follow this and that and then you can't do it because you're not feeling mm -hmm. ready yeah 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 very true like it has to be he says it had to be my own I had to be convicted by myself yeah. to want to get out. Yeah. And he was like, when I wanted to get out, that's when I wanted to start learning. Like, no one's going to yeah. change it for you. Yeah. That's why yeah. I think people need to just... If you Like, if you realise there is a problem, you need to sit up and be like, right, what can I actually do to yeah. change this? Because no one's going to change it for you. Mm -hmm. And that could be a harsh reality, but, yeah. like, at the end of the yeah. day, you have to look after yourself and your values and... Yeah all that kind of stuff so. like we can give people a nice push some people yeah. some people may require a push like yeah. come on you can do this <laughs> like yes we got on, you but like on their own time yeah. yes yeah. definitely you can't compare yourself to yeah. other people's yeah. Yeah. yeah i always say yeah. that yeah my story is different to your story yeah, exactly. what i can accept maybe you won't accept what i can carry maybe you won't be able to carry and just because i can carry it doesn't mean what you're going through is less and yeah. how you get out of what you're going through yeah. it's not going to be the same way that I got it how I got through like people yeah. with, people can have can be addicted to drugs or can have be very unwell like mm. mentally but just because one person decided oh I'm going to change my mindset yeah. I'm going to get out this cycle I'm going to change it for my generation or the people coming after me the next person may not think like that mm. so that aspect of patience and non-judgment mm. I think are the two key things that as a community we can do yeah because you don't know how pe like you said like sarah said like you don't know how people are going how yeah. people got there like even the homeless like yeah. you don't know how people got there some people think yeah. oh everybody just got drunk and then yeah, lost everything and they lost their there house they lost their job yeah but it could be their company or whoever they worked they got they went out go. of business yeah. and they got let go and they couldn't keep up with the rent or they couldn't keep up with the mortgage mm -hmm. payments. They lost their house. Yeah. They had to sell all their belongings to yeah. pay for food. Like you don't know people's circumstances and mm -hmm. that's what I mean. Like, and what Natalia said, like you can't judge people yeah. for their scenarios because it's not necessarily themselves who've put them in that situation. Exactly. Yeah. They Very haven't true. put themselves there. It's been a generational thing, things that lead up to this step yeah. by step. So and also we, when we hear the word generational i don't want people to think like it has to come from your parents oh yeah it could be generational could be like day after day yeah. month after month week after week yeah. it doesn't matter like it's more of a process yeah. rather than 
and like, timeline of yeah, how you got there. Exactly, like, that's it. Yeah, like a process, not a timeline, which yeah. is a huge thing to yeah. for us to know. Like, but yeah, but like overall, guys, what do you guys think about this generational cycle? Did you guys learn something? Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm just thinking myself, you know, like about my like family. And <laughs> I'm trying to realize things here. It's like, oh yeah, maybe I have to stop this oh, cycle God. here. You know, yeah. yeah. No, that's yeah. I've, I've learned a lot. Yeah, sure, and I think yeah. talking through it as well has yeah. made me a lot more um, knowledgeable on it yeah. as well. Don't like, I didn't know any of this yeah. before today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and even just talking it out yeah. and like even that thing about my dad, like I just realised that I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know that before. I was like, that is a generational Gosh, pattern. Actually, this is like, I didn't think of that before. <laughs> yes, Peter. <laughs> well <laughs> done, like, Peter. <laughs> shout out, we're here for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, definitely. Like me, I've definitely learned so much. Like yeah, from your tips, Sarah. Yeah. From Natalia about definitely about um, the non-judgment side of it yeah like but even well, your questions they like made us think about it more yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. because it's like some things like you'd never think no. of you'll never think of I was like it just reminded me of my yeah. of my work the, my, the, the person I used to work with mm. and I was like damn like he wasn't able to look he's like I can't look people in the eye because yeah. of the shame of it all yeah. but like now I'm learning like he was yeah. breaking a cycle of where yeah. he was ashamed of something that he, that he used to do consistently consecutively not look people in the eye or yeah and it's all shy helping away, yourself yeah. like at the end of the day you're not doing it for anyone else yeah. by yourself mm-hmm. and then obviously anyone who comes after you it's ju- that's just an extra added advantage yeah. whoever comes after <laughs> and is they'll an advantage. be thankful to yeah. you for not having to deal with whatever you dealt yeah. with like yes that's why like i think it's so important yeah. like that healthy relationship like yeah there's a i think everyone needs to have a healthy relationship in cycles mm. like some cycles are not terrible yeah. like they're not as bad as yeah you think like you think like yeah. uh, when i think of like something minor yeah not even something minor like i'm thinking like just say for the aspect of like oh i'm gonna stop like your dad yeah like he chose that he's gonna start a new but a healthier cycle yeah. that i'm gonna go college and everybody who comes after me will go college yeah. too he changed the tune of his cycle yeah, exactly. he didn't allow it to bring him down or tear him down yeah. but he chose to change that bicycle cycle that he had before him yeah. and make something new out of it exactly. which is yeah. which is Relate, better yeah. yeah like I'm like wow Sarah your dad is helping us here <laughs> <laughs> not here but he's helping us here in the spirit <laughs> in spirit <laughs> but yeah but that is us guys you that I was Benita here in the corner I have Sarah Sarah and Natalia <laughs> and that was our episode on breaking generational cycles I hope you guys learned something good today or something new today But yeah, we'll see you on the flip side next time. Bye. Bye.